Yeah, hi everyone. Um, yeah, welcome to the session on uh, building new APIs with a model-driven approach. Um, so it's um, one of the latest additions that we built into our um, integration stack from IBM that combines application integration and API management and uh, API protection through gateways in a single tool set. And that is available through our cloud pack for integration. And I just want to introduce the, um, the philosophy and the benefits behind it, certainly, and what kind of problems we are trying to, um, to solve and achieve with this. Okay, just a quick agenda. Um, yeah, um, a couple of definitions, like what is API management? I think that's uh, something everyone knows here um, in this audience, but uh, quickly through uh, to move into application integration, and then certainly the need to combine those capabilities um, in in one experience and one designer tooling potentially, um, and the benefits we see from that. Um, little intro to the to the platform that we're using, um, and um, some some backgrounds on uh, what an integration platform can deliver eventually. A couple of features that are interesting um, that are part of this um, solution and offering, which is um, uh, yeah, natural language processing, for example, to um, find um, respective integration assets to help with mapping data between um, an API and then a um, back, uh, backend data schema and structure. And then certainly um, the core thing, the integrated API authoring piece, um, which is also shown in the demo that follows this. Okay, let's get started. What is API management? I think that's something that um, many have seen, the kind of life cycle of APIs. Certainly um, in a more traditional respect, you need to be able to create APIs to expose data, microservices, SaaS applications in the tooling of your choice, I guess. Um, so it can be an API specific editor, but it can also be um, an API designer that is uh, provided by uh, a product offering. Certainly you need to be able, and that's the whole, um, um, purpose of this um, discipline, if you will, to, to protect your APIs um, and to quickly apply and build an extensible policies to secure and control and mediate um, the delivery of the API. So uh, things like rate limiting, things like different um, token authentication technologies need to be easily um, applicable and um, built into your solution there, certainly. Then, yes, you know, with the growing economy of APIs, you need a, a means to to rapidly publish lifecycle governance and specifically analyze the usage um, of your APIs to be across of uh, the pieces that are going well, the pieces that need rework, um, and basically to, to justify your uh, level of return on investment here, certainly. And last but not least, the socialization piece, um, typically going through the developer portal uh, where external um, developers or consumers can discover and find your APIs, they can register your their applications, um, and subscribe to um, subscribe to API products and API specifically. This is something that we extend to um, things we call endpoint management even. So the developer um, portal is not maybe only being used for APIs anymore, but also for things like um, Kafka topics, for example, like async APIs and, and many, many more use cases to um, basically invite the developer community in a controlled way to, to find and um, and discover your endpoints that you want to expose. So um, certainly the API strategy must lead um, across of different roles. Everyone knows, yes, API developer uh, to build new integrations, but there's also a couple of other roles that have been evolving certainly over the last years. Um, the product manager is a known term. Um, his role is probably less technical. He would um, publish and socialize APIs. He would um, arrange them into products, uh, define plans, rate limits, and things like that, and, and watches over the entire commercialization of the um, monetization of the APIs, potentially. Um, and that is the entire provider side, but there's also certainly a consumer side. So we need to have uh, um, means to, um, to certainly address your application developers, your API consumers, to discover the APIs, to reuse them for their purpose, and um, to assist them in their um, in their mission, if you will. And other roles in this context, yes, DevOps is something that gets um, more and more uh, predominant. Um, the entire stack we are talking about here is running uh, fully on Kubernetes and uh, Red Hat OpenShift. 
And that is something that we see as, um, as quite important. Um, so you basically are aligned with um, not, not only uh, microservice style uh, application building, but also um, a level of um, Kubernetes and containerized integration platforms in between. And then last but not least, the um, IT architect has a role to um, secure or to monitor uh, the corporate IT and secure standards, security standards and governance to see um, that the API platform and the API is published are adhering to the co corporate standard. is basically, uh, um, yes, came with a new release version 10. Uh, mid of last year and um, had a couple of distinct things that we're not looking at in this session, um, but that I just quickly, um, let's say, advertise here with things like um, GraphQL support that you can natively build GraphQL and also um, async APIs um, in the same catalog with the same tooling and with a full consideration of the platform. There's a lot of testing in there. So there's like a, um, a Postman style uh, test client. We'll see a similar one in um, the application development space uh, in this demo later on, um, but also a API test and monitor piece that allows you to automatically create test assertions for your APIs um, just by publishing them. And then while you drive the API through lifecycle, it can always um, you know, see and automatically um, check that it's still a fully functioning API based on the changes that you did. But also for the, um, for the gateway, in this case, the, um, the, the theme is to bridge and secure event interactions. Um, our gateway understands um, Kafka, for example, and can nicely um, dive and synchronize between different um, or protect different Kafka endpoints. Um, but also things like AMQP um, and MQ for messaging are uh, native protocols that are understandable by the gateway. And that just allows you to, to extend the purpose of our, um, of our cloud native gateway to different use cases. And last but not least, mainly um, the operator-based framework, so the way that you deploy um, your API management, your gateways, uh, has been you know, simplified greatly with day two uh, Kubernetes-style operations um, in the sense that you can basically um, deploy your environment by code in different flavors based on different templates and based on a high level of automation with um, um, operators. So moving on into the application integration space, um, a bit different approach, certainly. Uh, when we look at customers, it's often a, a pretty broad team sport to get um, application integration going. So the integration between different application endpoints, um, many different people in this team involved, like you know, database, database administrators, um, database designers, certainly, that um, um, hold and, and govern the schema. Um, but certainly, yeah, backend de developers that um, might tap into your um, backend systems and your legacy systems. Um, and um, moving this on, then certainly the architect has a role to, to overlook the proper integration and the architecture behind it. Um, and then, you know, people like actual integration developers and the administrators. Certainly, APIs have arrived in that space as well. So there, there's in the form almost as a contract in that sense. So the value of an API you can see here comes from a much deeper um, visibility than just the API exposed on the portal because there's a lot behind it that makes up the actual integration to the um, to the backend system and the availability of the data itself. So our approach is something um, we call um, Cloud Pack for Integration Designer now. Um, that is a a no-code tooling to, to create those um, integrations based on smart connectors, based on um, a web client where you just drag and drop these integration points and then configure them and have an easy means um, to, to basically build these integrations. So a guided and intuitive data-driven um, tooling. And it is 
basically tooling for many different um, levels of proficiency. So the citizen developer certainly comes into play, but also specialist integrators can get uh, very far with this tooling and um, provide you a end-to-end a -end experience as we'll see in the demonstration. Um, so it's all about increased productivity and time to market because building this integration, as we'll see in the demo as well, is a matter of um, minutes and hours and not a matter of um, weeks and months to a great extent. A lot of um, you know scalability, um, industry security standards, it's basically baked into the platform and it's something where you don't have to um, you know provide or invest that much consideration anymore because you can trust your trusted um, integration platform. Um, and it happens based on a pretty broad connector library, um, so-called smart connectors. And as you can see here, it's just categorized um, a little bit um, in the directions that it's going from just plain content services to all, basically you name it, uh, CRM systems, ERP systems, um, cognitive and AI services, um, and just other you know cloud platforms that provide services that are part of this set uh, is being built up. For, um, you know, uh, for mainframe systems and um, basically your sister um, uh, So what's the need there um, to combine these practices into maybe a, a single practice? So here, um, our agile developer more or less comes into play. Um, and um, that is basically a, a role that has been coming up um, heavily in the last years in the tra digital transformation trends and journeys. Um, and it's a single person that basically um, needs to require a lot of these individual tasks that have been um, spread out into to teams or onto different shoulders uh, back in the years. Um, and the need to iterate through this at a, at a high cadence, if you will. So she she has as a person to have a fairly high um, confidence and um, and and must relate to to known behavior continuously um, to provide um, you know quality integrations and APIs at the same time and um, more or less unleash the power of many capabilities uh, without being maybe a too deep subject matter expert in each of these capabilities but to have the proper tools at hand um, to achieve this kind of integration. Um, as a comprehensive um, agile developer role in person. So here just a sample uh, scenario. In this case, um, the technical side would be an, an just an API exposes a subset of the CRM um, system like Salesforce, for example, um, and you want to apply rate limits, uh, just a subset certainly of the entire piece um, and uh, rate limits and credential management um, to make it agnostic and accessible to digital partners, for example. Um, who are not trusted with the CRM um, system and uh, um, get credentials provided here. Um, but additional things like um, SaaS vendor billing, you might want to um, you know, build proportional to the storage capacity. Um, and the digital team is basically, uh, in this sense, not expected to, to understand the full CRM and data model that you want to expose it to. Um, you might be refactoring your CRM backend, and that is... Um, meant to be agnostic to the API. And in that sense, it is it is decoupled um, off the API implementation with a solution like this. So this calls for a integrated um, integration and um, API building experience with uh, many different dis disciplines from, from both sides. And um, a, a authoring experience that covers both is actually quite a good, um, good starting point for these things. So our offering in the space is called the Cloud Pack integration, which combines um, all, all of our integration styles and tools into a single platform, um, accessible from a single um, navigator uh, that also integrates these components technically, as we'll see. And there's a lot of um, 
additional capability in there, like a unified governance framework for logging and monitoring for, to a single source, a shared asset repository between the different integration styles, and a lot of AI and machine learning uh, support for the different disciplines, being it API testing, um, being it um, data map. Thing in Atori, where you can just use your um, natural language, as we'll see in a second. This is all based on Red Hat OpenShift, which is part of the offering, and that makes it agnostic to, to environments where you want to deploy it. If it's on-premise, if it's in a private cloud, or any marketable um, cloud flavor eventually, um, and that makes it a broad, usable um, platform here. So if you look at this, um, the different capabilities offered there from, from left to right, you can see um, the API management, application integration, and the gateway security piece is something Thing that's already covered end to end in this scenario, but there's also additional um, integration styles like pure messaging, um, you know, Kafka event streaming, and and just data transfer scenarios that you can, um, um, you know, nicely access from the the navigator, use, and basically have the the right tool integration style at hand for the uh, for the tasks that you get from the line of business for the application. Okay, just a couple of. Uh, um, features and um, capabilities that are relevant to our scenario. Um, I already mentioned the, the natural language processing in there, um, what it is, and it basically um, gives you the means to just describe your integration requirements or intents in natural language. And um, the system will basically pick it up, interpret, and um, you know provide you um, the proper integration flows from the asset repository that match your requirements. And it's a much faster way to, to find um, the proper um, integration template or integration flow um, based just on natural language um, descriptions here. Technically, the designer um, goes in the asset repository, describes his intent or his utterance, um, and then the embedded um, Watson API service starts to interpret this will read all the templates um, from the automation assets that are available, um, and then uh, will display recommended flows that match your intent, um, so you don't have to walk through the entire piece. So there's much more than just a keyword matching. Um, it is a real interpretation and, and a step ahead in, in working with larger repositories like this. And once you build your integration flow, you can always um, uh, yes, um, check in the user created flow as a template into the automation assets so that it becomes a, a full circle and round trip and grows usably in, over time. I mean, it's important that you have the, the proper description of uh, the purpose of your integration, but based on that, um, the natural um, language translation gives you actually quite a, a powerful tool at hand. So, this is just an example here where um, you know, a developer comes in and says, ah, I need a integration flow or base to classify tickets by emotions. Um, and then in the lower piece or part, you can see it's actually a, a keyword search with a couple of hits. And the middle piece is actually recommended assets based on, on the natural language interpretation. Um, also with, um, you know, a probability and a certainty that um, the algorithm provides, which is visible here in the middle. And the last piece is the core part of um, this session, actually. So the integrated offering and architecture um, to build an integration with an API and a gateway um, policy flow in one go, um, which starts basically in the um, integration or CP4I designer, where you, you build your integration flow. Uh, you want to expose it as an API, certainly in this case. Um, and um, you can easily just with a press of a single button more or less deploy it into API management, um, deploy the API piece to the gateway. Um, you, you will put the, the bar file, so the actual integration flow on the integration server as a runtime. And then you can do all your, your testing through the gateway to the integration server um, and to all other connected pieces from there. And it's, um, it's a single experience that used to be quite, uh, or used to require quite some separate touch points to get the um, entire use case going. So the important base is the environment, certainly. So the, the, the products that are integrated here for API management, for App Connect or IIB, for uh, data power as a gateway are running as, as, as they are on the market. But the um, Cloud Pack for integration and the platform navigator um, 
on the left side here is basically what provides the glue um, between those components. So they become aware of each other. And based on that, they can um, interact, they can provide um, an extended user interface for these scenarios. And they are quite aware to publish to, to one another um, with the you know, proper paths, information, and uh, specifications that are necessary to, to deploy a end-to-end -end scenario with this. Um, the additional piece, if you look at it, is something that is yeah, quite typical to um, API management and authoring gateway policies. So you, you build your, application, uh, your integration flow, and then you have a good means to, to visually add things like rate limiting, uh, provide a switch flow, redaction gateway scripts, um, token generation and validations for different security policies. All these pieces can be added uh, while you build your integration um, to make it ready for a uh, proper um, gateway deployment uh, from the from the same user interface eventually. And it all happens from the deployment side as well. Um, something we we call the, the magic green button, if you will. Um, on, once you hit that switch, it is actually doing the full uh, entire deployment we saw on the um, um, slide before. Um, so it'll take your um, integration uh, flow, the buff file, and deploy it on the integration server, the API is handed over to API management. Um, and from there, actually into the gateway, um, into the catalog, so it's discoverable, and eventually um, onto, the, um, onto the developer portal, so it is um, discoverable and usable for external application developers by single switch of a button. So if you're looking at the, the sequence flow um, for the deployment piece or for the infrastructure piece, um, basically the um, app connect as a component is, is basically looking if API management is available in the platform or environment. So it is um, it is aware of that. And um, the cloud pack for integration, um, you know, the platform navigator feeds that back, enables the integration API authoring as an additional piece in there. Um, and then app connect has intelligence and it goes to API certainly as well to query the API platform to see you know, what, what is the provider organization, what catalogs are available, where is the gateway to publish this uh, integration to uh, or the API definition and um, get um, awareness of the full context there. So the um, Agile developer um, starts building his integration flow um, as a, a document YAML file. Um, it'll automatically generate an open API specification uh, for that integration. Um, to be used. Um, it comes back um, to the Agile um, developer. And so you have means to, to build your gateway policies. So the rate limiting security tokens, what we saw in the previous slides to, to add to the open API specification and make it, make it ready for your deployment. And then effectively you will uh, start deploying it to the platform. Um, so he starts the API integration. That's the magic green button. Um, it then starts to deploy the integration endpoints to the integration server. Um, it creates a, a product to publish the API into API management and from there into um, the gateway and um, the API catalog. And then you can go ahead. This was just a single switch to test the integration from um, you know, different environments and perspectives. So just from your little integration flow, um, from the API manager, um, from the developer portal, it is all ready to go. So um, basically you send a request from the different test environments um, to the data power gateway to test your API. Um, the definitions, the gateway policies are being enforced obviously, and um, it invokes an integration flow in the integration server on AppConnect, uh, which is the whole purpose, um, uh, receives the response in the flow, and that is um, returned to the um, to the test or to the uh, agile developer in this sense from his test environment. But there's also perspective from the um, application developer, um, certainly who is um, accessing the developer portal um, after subscribing um, his um, application to a specific um, product that he registered there, accesses the API, does some testing, and gets the same. Um, result returned, or at least the same interface returned um, as an API response. So one click of a button gives you a, a fully integrated solution here. 
Okay, so enough theory. Let's take a, a look at the, at the actual platform and the integration here. Um, you can see this is the uh, Cloudback integration navigator that I mentioned before that aggregates all the different um, integration styles and disciplines into a, um, a single accessible page, either through the tiles on the right that can be certainly customized, access controlled, um, and defined um, to your uh, deployment requirements, or you can also access them through a, a pull-down menu here on the left side um, that gives you all the um, design and runtime components that we see on the right here to work with. Um, in our case, we want to start working with um, building or designing an API here. And um, that piece is giving us the CloudPack for integration designer here. So um, it gives you easy starting points to create uh, things like an event-driven flow um, or an API exposed flow as another alternative. Um, or you can just start um, you know, a flow by describing an integration as mentioned before or import a flow. Um, so different nice starting points. We want to build an API here um, or an API based flow, if you will. Um, and it comes back and um, lets us easily build a specific model. So in our case, we want to build a, um, a lead API against Salesforce. Um, so you can easily, um, as an external uh, person, similar to the use case we saw in the presentation, um, create new leads without um, having full access to, or with only having controlled access to, to a CRM system at the back end. And it starts with just, um, you know, simply building a, a model that we need, certainly. So you can add properties here, uh, things like, you know, pretty straightforward, like an ID. Um, we just build it out here, first name, uh, last name, uh, email, uh, company, um, country perhaps, um, give them an address, maybe as an object, um, and as a subcomponent, things like um, a street number. Oh, come on. Uh, zip code. Uh, state. Uh, let me just add this town, just the wrong order, town, zip code, and state, so it's proper. Maybe a telephone number and a description. So just a simplified um, schema or data set that we'll use for the API and to feed into something like Salesforce. Um, and then we are ready to basically select an operation here. So. Um, the piece we want to do is to create a lead, which automatically generates a, a post action here. So we can post a lead um, or, or a post API operation here um, to create the lead. And then we can start implementing this as a flow. Um, quite nice. We get a um, proper um, request and response message here predefined for us. And what we want to do is um, you know, go against Salesforce, certainly. So we can enter the library of um, smart connectors here um, and just simply start typing ahead something like Salesforce with all the different um, objects and uh, capabilities in here that we can access. In our case, we want to create a lead. And when it comes back, you can see it's a, it is a smart connector. So it kind of reads out the entire massive or large field structure of, of a lead. And even if it gets extended, Extended in the backend of Salesforce, this will be uh, dynamically discovered here. So that's actually quite nice and a quite high level of interpretation of this. So I can go ahead and now just start mapping fields by myself. Um, but um, there's certainly a um, AI-driven um, mapping support here. So I can just see and view the suggestions that it does for me. So it takes my um, initial data schema and maps it to potential fields here. Uh, first name, last name, yeah, that's quite straightforward. But other things like city and town, that uses a, a level of interpretation and, and support and help that is good. And this model is learning. So once you, you accept or don't accept a specific match, um, it, is, it is getting better the next time you work with it. So most of our um, model elements have been picked up. 
This is something we don't need for now because the ID comes in the, in the feedback. And from here, we can already go ahead and test it. Um, cancel this. So I got my, oops, hold on. My suggestions. I'll wrap this off. Then I apply the suggestions, right? Um, and then I can start testing it. So pretty simple. This goes straight into the connector into Salesforce to see if what we build is feasible. And let's see what comes back. And ooh, okay, bad test result. Um, an error message from Salesforce is uh, pushed through to us. And it says, okay, uh, we have to specify a valid email address um, and sample email might not be a proper email address. Yeah, that makes sense. And this is mainly due to the fact that um, the, the standard um, test data here that is generated is probably not that useful. You can see that here, if you look in the object, uh, sample email is not a proper one. Why don't we just intelligently regenerate a sample data piece here and use a proper email address? And you can see it's it's well interpreted to provide you good test data that you can use as a starting point. Um, we just hit try this action again. And then you can see um, it is hopefully getting through. Yes, we get a 200 OK back. Um, this all went into Salesforce, hopefully into a new lead. And we get get a lead ID back that we can um, use to further build this integration flow. Um, so the lead ID is something that we use for the response. We don't um, extend it massively. Um, we just use and pick the lead ID. Um, and yes, by that, complete our integration flow. OK, so we should give it a name. Um, Salesforce ID from web, I will call it. And you can see um, we've built the integration flow, which is um, consistent and tested to some extent. But what we also get generated is the open API specification with all the details that we need to it, um, like the operations that we can use, um, that we can take a look at the server definitions, uh, additional tags and parameters that are available. So it's a pretty simplistic. Um, API spec, spec for now, but depending on, on uh, what additional pieces you put to it, it is a full open API spec that you can use um, and edit and extend to your needs here in this case. But also, besides the, the, the Swagger definition, um, you can influence and, and, and basically manage your gateway policies that are um, necessary for uh, your governance. So in this case, it's just an invoke flow that invokes our API call. Um, but there's lots of stuff you can do for transforming it on an API level, add additional policies like rate limiting, which we could add. Um, uh, just limit requests, we might call it. Um, you can select from different sources, like um, the, the default one in the, in the catalog or in the plan. Uh, we just use the, the default plan that is um, part of the API deployment. Um, but you can also add other things like, um, you know, token generations, uh, token inspections and validations, and stuff like that. So quite a, um, a substantial piece of uh, capabilities you can add to it, and you can use um, to define an API definition on top of it. So that's so much for design. Let's see if we can actually um, use it. So this is the, the magic green button I mentioned before. Um, you, you're not only saving what you did, you're actually starting to deploy it. Um, and deploying means deploy to the API management piece, um, to the gateway, to the catalog, to the developer portal, so it's usable and testable. And for testing, um, you get an own test client in here. So you can see um, you know, the uh, metadata for the spec that we have built here, the level of default um, security you have, just an API key. You can download the API document, um, and you can look at your operations. So we are posting a lead, obviously. Um, the security levels, um, the request body you can see and find here with the with the test data and, and the schema that uh, you might want to publish in your developer portal as well. Um, different request languages to to easily and quickly build a client, uh, maybe just in, not just in curl, but something like Python or Go or Swift. It's uh, pre-generated. You can just copy paste and have a starting point. Um, and then certainly for um, your body piece, um, you can have um, a example data here. And last but not least, we would like to try it. And um, yes, the API key information is just stored and provided.
provided for you. Um, for a request body, you can just generate the data and send it off. Takes a second. So this is actually going to the data power gateway from there to our integration server to call out to Salesforce, um, to post the data there, the, the generated one and receive a request ID back um, to display as an, as an API response. So it was a full round trip. Um, from the developer environment here, but certainly there's more to it. There was a, a level of interaction certainly with API management. So we can look at um, our API management piece here. Just open that up. And here in, in the API management piece, you can see um, in our catalog, it has deployed the API. You can see it here. Um, it has been published from the state perspective, used the default plan that I specified, and it's ready to go in, in our API management. But um, the eventual outcome you want to see is that um, if I go into the developer portal here, certainly, you can also see um, the new API shows up here. Um, you can open it, you can consume it and test it as an external um, API developer. Um, you can just go into the API. I have to sign in certainly as a developer. And once I select my product, um, I can subscribe to the API, to specific plan, for example. Um, it'll complain that I don't have an application yet, which I can quickly create. Um, I just call it my consumer app, for example, uh, can store it away. And that gives me a set of credentials here that I can, or that I should copy away. Um, and from there, I have my app registered and I have good means to, to access and, and test the API integration flow that we just had. Let me just hit that consumer app. Um, and you can see, um, I can go ahead and subscribe to it, to the default plan, once I created my application. And now I'm done and I can actually work with the API. So in this case, you can, you have a similar experience that's for the external app developer to discover APIs in the developer portal. Um, I can access the operation. I can try it again. Um, it stores my credentials. Um, once I'm here in the authenticated environment, but I've seen that before, I can generate my body um, for Pauline Miscelli, and then I can send it off against um, Salesforce. So just fix this last piece here. This is for our self-signed certificates. And I can see if I get success now with a second attempt. And yes, it went through to Salesforce and I get the uh, Salesforce ID back. So pretty end-to-end -end solutioning here um, from a single design environment. And um, just to prove you that it was um, something real, we should see a few more leads being generated um, with Pauline Miscelli, our last one here in Salesforce in the lead section. That's uh, just my developer account and quite a straightforward piece um, to get this done. So what we've seen is you can easily build um, a full end-to-end -end integration piece here with um, App Connect Enterprise and uh, the Cloud Pack for integration. And um, it um, not only allows you to test your integration, um, you can define gateway policies, you can work with the open API specification, and certainly you can build um, the integration flow to different backends in a, in a single go here. Okay, looking at time, I think I got 40 minutes covered. I have an extended piece for this demonstration where I can actually show how you can also um, get a Slack notification basically um, for new leads that have been created and that have been picked up um, on a Kafka topic, for example. So uh, I would extend our um, integration flow to, to post a message to Kafka and then I have another flow that picks it up from new lead messages from Kafka and, and puts it up to Slack. But I think for the sake of time, I'm gonna stop here and 
maybe go back for questions. Any questions to this scenario? Um, specific uh, more requirements? Um, how applicable it is for maybe one of your corporate scenarios? That would be nice to know. There is a trial for this. If you just um, go on the IBM website, there's a Cloudback for integration trial where you can get it um for a limited time to to just play around with it and um yeah basically follow either your own ideas or something that is wrapped into a pot and, and you can easily find that on the if you just google for cloud pack for integration trial for ibm that is um, quite broadly available there Check the Q&A, it's pretty quiet. So if you have a question, please type into the Q&A and I would pick it up. Otherwise I'll wait here for a while. Yeah, once again, if you'd like to ask a question, please go ahead and type it into the chat. And then the trial that Bernd was speaking about is also listed in our booth, if you want to click on that as well. Yeah, fair point. So a question did come in for open API. How does the platform support O authent 2.0 authorization consent scope? Uh, can you repeat the second part? Yeah, it's right in uh, the chat. It says, um, Oh, I can see that. Oh, yeah. open, right. yep. I was in the queue. Okay. How does the platform support O auth 2.0 authorization consent scope? Yes. So that is um, something that is part of um, the API definition there that you can um, um, apply um, OAuth um, policies there and define it for the data power gateway. Um, and um, also certainly a, a consent scope as part of the construct. So that is not nothing that comes with the uh, App Connect side that is part of API Connect and a, and a, a, a pretty standard approach to use OAuth for uh, authorization. Um, and also use it as a as a constant scope for your um, for your token base authentication. Um, yeah, I can can point you to the documentation and um, into core API management. But um, the beauty of this scenario we saw here is that you can now take um, your application integration, take it all the way um, to to build um, the uh, OAuth specific authorization uh, pieces and the token authentication. Uh, in one in one go and in one environment even. Yeah, next question. If the API processing requires further processing in our in-house server, how do we connect the flow from IBM Cloud to our in-house server? So the first thing is it doesn't all have to be on IBM Cloud. It can all be on IBM Cloud, but it can all be on-premise as well. Um, so the connectivity between you know, cloud to on-premise is typically um, you know, done with um, 
yeah, if it's sensitive, certainly with a VPN solution and protected by a gateway again, which you can do um, in probably on top of just a, a TLS solution, which you wouldn't want to use for that kind of interaction. Um, but there's a reasonable means to to build up a hybrid scenario, as you're describing it here, between a um, a, a cloud-based API management and maybe a, a in-house um, backend system that, that you want to need. So the, the strategy with the API management gateways is that you typically put the gateways close to your backend services that you want to protect. And the API management itself, you can um, typically, um, yeah, you can, you can easily uplift it and, and run it um, in a cloud-based scenario. Um, so that, that gives you a cloud-based uh, or a hybrid flavor of this. Um, and depending on your additional needs, um, you, can, you can basically, um, if you want to run the gateway um, on the cloud as well and have your, your backend on-premise, you would uh, build up a, a VPN endpoint solution to, to protect the communication from the gateway back into your on-premise systems and your systems of record. So same applies if the because you're right you're, you're writing or asking for flow here the flow would be the integration flow potentially um, if that is reaching if that is running on cloud and reaching back into your on-premise backend systems it is something you would protect with a VPN solution. This um, yeah a marketable one available on IBM Cloud if you run it there, um, but but any other solution would would do the job as well, um, and that's a yeah I guess a rather typical. Um, hybrid cloud setup scenario that you have to pursue um, to, to, to safely um, access your backends. But I can see many, many customers are also running the app connect part on premise because it's, uh, it's, it's close to the backends and you have to more or less define the exit point where you want to um, lift components of this architecture to cloud, which can be, um, you know, after the gateway and, um, and um, you know, behind the app connect piece, for example, so you just have the API manager on cloud. So that's an architecture discussion, and it actually um, provides solutions for for every kind of combination there. What's the cost? Um, yes, that's a good one. Um, so for the for costing, you would probably, you should probably get in touch with us. Um, it is. Um, I mean, you can start with. There's a SaaS service on IBM Cloud for API management. Um, that is the the yeah the previous version five experience. So there's some um, quite a few steps back. If you want to have um, the things we saw today. With the new API management and cloud pick for integration, that is something that uh, will be available end of the year as a um, product or service uh, or SaaS service um, on IBM Cloud and AWS probably. Um, but um, until then, you can certainly um, deploy it uh, in the environment of choice, being on a cloud, on a private cloud uh, on premise. And that is, um, there's different licensing models for that. Certainly, it's uh, typically evaluated by um, um, virtual processor cores that you need. Um, so you would go ahead. We would probably provide a sizing for a scenario, or go with a um, small, medium, or large footprint sizing. And based on the um, processor cores that are consumed, being it on cloud or on premise, um, that needs to be licensed by the software. Um, and the licensing model behind it is. Cloud pack for integration, the platform is also a licensing model. And um, a single license provides you entitlement to all the different capabilities or sub capabilities, if you will. So if you're just looking at API management, the ratio is one to one. One Cloud pack license is, uh, or one Cloud pack core is one um, core of um, API Connect. But if you look at App Connect, for example, the ratio is different. 
um, because it's more capable. You you have to get uh, two cloud pack uh, core licenses and gives you one core of App Connect, for example. So there's a it's a ratio and it's it's like a currency, if you will, and and by that you can um, you know um, see the footprint there. There's also a new um, call based licensing, so you can uh, you know take a step back from the processor core based licensing and just define how many calls we will um, want to go through your system. And I think it's done by um, I have to check it actually if it's by fifty million call pieces or something. And um, by that you can um, top up to the um, required load that you see for your system and and have a new licensing, a new consumption-based licensing model then. You're welcome. <laughs> um, yeah, happy to, to be in touch on, on the pricing there a little bit. Um, as I'm more from the technical side, I consult with um, a salesperson on that, but I can certainly um, serve and hand you out some, some figures and, and discuss the model if you like. Okay, so if just if you want to stay in touch, um, and I know it's in my profile as well, but just for handy purposes, I'm just gonna type in my email here. So uh, we can do any kind of follow-up, being a technical or, or commercial nature. Yep, you're welcome. Any more questions? Anything unclear? Um, yeah, not much, too much to say. Most of these um, are available also as as videos, uh, the recordings, so you can can recap. But um, I think the um, uh, the main value is actually um, building something that is based on your on your own requirements here.
Yeah, I think next stop is a break um, until 12.50. And um, it gives you 30 minutes left um, for the next session to start. So I'll stay until 12.20 and then um, I think this session will be terminated. Okay, there's another question. <laughs> I didn't monitor the chat anymore. I saw you connecting some flow rate limiter in the API gateway. If you have some on-premise functions that we want to add, add it through API gateway to drag and drop on our on-premise function, is this doable? Mm. Yeah, not quite sure what you're referring to here. Um, you can do um, you can do customized policies and. Um, um custom um gateway scripts certainly to to you know in for example the javascript world to customize the the flow rate limiting is specifically one policy that we provide that you can configure um in the api assembly that you saw but you can also um apply it um on the product level in api management um so to to really defi define rate and burst limiting uh, so have a level of control of um, how much load is going against the API. Um, drag and drop would work with the pieces, the two pieces that we that I just discussed that we provide, and you can customize it to your needs. Um, I'm not really sure what you mean with your on-premise function for this, um, but you should find a way to to get the proper rate limit. It's typically Typically, the rate limits are assigned to different plans for the product and API, like you know, gold, medium, bronze, and um, by that um, follow a certain pattern that you um, that you publish the API with. Um, yeah, and as with all APIs, the definition um, you can certainly export, import, and publish from your own tooling, so you can define um, those rate limits pretty much externally or automate some sort of um, um, transformation of the API policy there that you can then publish into our platform again. So that level of automation is possible. For the drag and drop, it is, I think, bound to what you saw there and the, the um, rate limiting um, policies and capabilities in there. All right, um, I'm gonna call the session over. Um, I left my email address here. If you have any more questions, um, just um, send me a note. I'll pick it up and I'm happy to, to continue the conversation um, at a different point and I'll let you go into the break now. Thanks. <laughs>